Hi, my name is Dr. Richard Abbey. I show parents of children suffering from ADHD and dyslexia what to do so their children don't have to suffer anymore. Over the years, we have incorporated EEG neurofeedback into our reading interventions so that they're more powerful and so that the children with comorbid ADHD can overcome both ADHD and their reading disorder. Here's how we do it. We have a brain. What's important to know is that the visual information kind of comes back through to the visual cortex and it travels up to this word form area and travels through this arcuate fasciculus. And these are super important reading pathways. So I want to focus on those things. We're also going to focus on uh, ADHD and attentional uh, difficulties in this particular case. But if these pathways are dysregulated or not connected appropriately, it's essential to address these things because otherwise it's kind of like trying to jump over high hurdles, but you don't have the strength to do that. And so if we don't have the proper connections, then it would be really hard to learn how to read. Now, most people make the connections through reading, but if you have dyslexia, it's very, very difficult to do that. And so traditionally over the past 50 to 70 years, there are methods like the Orton-Gillingham method and phonics and techniques that learning specialists use. And these are using skill-based techniques to influence the neuroplasticity. But what if you could go deeper than that by doing neuroimaging and using that neuroimaging in a very powerful way to connect the brain and then go up the ladder and go back into the phonological awareness training and ultimately the higher order reading and reading fluency. Well, those are the programs that we put together and it all starts with neuroimaging. And this is super important because when we're armed with this information and we know what to do, we can actually help the children build their brains through their own internal resources and using neurofeedback, strengthen the connections and then they can go through the process of becoming much better readers and even focusing their attention much, much better. By using EEG imaging techniques, we are able to actually look at the coherence or the connectivity uh, in the brain. And I think it's very important to look a little bit closer what we're really talking about here. When you look at the EEG, and if we focus on these front two leads right here, we can see that there's a couple of rhythms that are very similar here. And so if you looked at the, see this one right here versus this one here, they're very similar rhythms. Here's another one right here. Uh, we're looking at similar patterns here and that would indicate a degree of coherence. Here's some more here. When we're looking at these statistics, we are trying to see across this minute and 47 seconds how well connected or hyper connected they are and what that means for the client. From an attention regulation standpoint, we see the posterior singlet and aspects of the cuneus dysregulated at about 15 hertz, right in the uh, low beta range. Now, if we look at the connectivity uh, especially right around uh, 12 hertz, uh, we will see how this his reading area is not developing as well as we would hope. And so we can look at the normal uh, coherence metrics. We would expect these areas like we were showing on the graph before uh, to be better developed. So we have some uh, significant amount of hypo connectivity all throughout the visual cortex and kind of moving through uh, this arcuate fasciculus area. Now, we can actually use diffuse tensor imaging to visualize uh, aspects uh, of this, uh, the fasciculi and more importantly uh, for this child, the arcuate fasciculus and other areas that would be important in the reading process. And we can see these are very much uh, dysregulated. Uh, from a timing standpoint, we see that he's moving very quickly through these areas. And when you have 
uh, parts of the brain that aren't well established and uh, not communicating well, they're not very well differentiated and often the young person will not spend a lot of time processing that information in deep and meaningful ways and this leads to difficulties in this case uh, with uh, reading and you know when when things aren't wired up and connected very well it's extremely difficult to learn how to read because just establishing those connections through traditional uh, phonological awareness drills and other techniques that are very good and scientifically based have their limitations but if we know this through this imaging and these imaging techniques and then we can use this information to provide helpful feedback to the child and they can build their brains uh, then when they go back into or simultaneously receive that reading instruction uh, it's kind of like you just added fertilizer or you help the child form the pathways build those muscles in the gym, so to speak, and now they're going to build the skills. And the skills, uh, taking that further with the phonological awareness drills and actually going further into learning how to read. So by the time they hit third grade, they are actually going to be reading to learn and they are successful at uh, passing that goal and uh, really the real goal is to get the child to enjoy the learning process and academics. And that's actually what happened in this case. This child uh, has no signs of dyslexia. In fact, reading two grades above grade level uh, and has uh, no signs of an attention regulation problem. So these are ways that you can actually image the brain. Uh, you can help a young person get exponentially better, better beyond what would be possible if we were only using traditional methods. By using this imaging and these techniques, we can help young people and others go beyond what would normally be possible by using modern technology, by giving them real-time feedback, by monitoring their development over time. And so instead of this wait to fail approach, we can use these imaging techniques to identify the child when they're in trouble before they even realize they're getting in trouble or maybe they're uh, experiencing further developmental stagnation in these areas and that's impeding the learning process or uh, they're having trouble with really accelerating that growth curve. Uh, and so by doing follow-up appointments, we can continue to foster that development in a very healthy way. And it's a really good tool to help and advise parents and help children uh, really realize their uh, absolute best potential. At the SBMT conference, I will leave some time for questions if you have any regarding these imaging techniques and the way they can be integrated into your clinical practice or referring to those who use this in their practice to help your clients. Uh, even better.